The small form factor cooling world is a place which is really difficult to get into. Not only are you severely restricted in height due to the ridiculously small cases, but those RAM sticks being so damn close to the CPU limits horizontal expansion to exactly here. All of this means that you are trying to win a race with two broken legs and a hemorrhoid episode, which means that you need to be really good at crawling on your stomach. Meet the Scythe Shuriken 2, a tiny small form factor cooler that fits exactly into the SFF boundaries while hopefully performing like a big boy. So this is one of Scythe's, 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 Scythe's. This is one of Scythe's small form factor coolers. By default, it measures exactly 58 millimeters in height. That is, if you leave those top anti-vibration rubber pieces stuck on the fan. Specifically mentioned by Scythe on their website, you can remove those pads and get the cooler down to 57 millimeters, a size that conveniently fits perfectly into a very specific case. Not that one millimeter overhang due to rubber could also just be solved by, I don't know, pressing? To solve that nasty issue of heat, Scythe uses one of their case flex fans in a 92mm form factor. The 15mm thick fan is just slapped on and drilled on top of the heatsink and used as a top blower. While spinning at 2500 rpm, the case flex 92 pushes around 41.3 CFM at 1.36mm of H2O and of course, it is controllable via PVM. Underneath the fan, we will find the single heatsink used on here, which is connected to the base in a C-shaped way, while being connected by four copper heat pipes with the base. Speaking of which, a big copper nickel-plated base covering most of an average CPU nowadays, and yes, it could be bigger for Intel 12th gen, but it is still pretty much okay considering when the cooler came out. As the Shuriken 2 is obviously a cooler meant for really cramped places, compatibility is the most important factor. Luckily, Scythe meticulously followed a zero interference mythology and managed to completely stay outside of the keep out zone for both Intel and AMD. This means that there is absolutely nothing that will ever come into contact with a Shuriken 2, so you can go with RAM as high as you want. And you can even use RAM risers and for some reason, which I will never understand, create this. For compatibility, the Shuriken 2 can be installed on top of an LGA775 every 1150-1366-1200 for Team Intel. Over on the red side, we are looking at the newest AM4 and then going all the way back until the older FM1 sockets. As far as the content of the box is concerned, we will find a Shuriken 2, the usual mounting hardware for Intel and AMD, and... Uh, uh, well, uh, I, I, I really don't know who at Scythe thought it would be a good idea to implement a transparent bag for thermal paste. Oh no, no, the, the main issue in the first place was to use a bag at all, which is already annoying. And then the fact that it is transparent, it just sprinkles a bit of grossing out. Ignoring my latest nightmare fuel for a second, let's see how to install this thing. For AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed black retention brackets and place these plastic spacers on top with the side with a bigger hole facing down. From there, position the retention brackets on top with the central piece sticking out to the top and then pointing inside, and then screw it down using the short screws. Over on Intel's side, we can use the completely pre-assembled backplate, reposition the side screws to match the one on your mainboard, and then position it behind it. From there, position the spacers on top and then we can install the retention brackets in an outsticking position and screw it down using the thumb screws. Now on both sockets we can use some of that mayonnaise and position the cooler on top of the CPU. Luckily, Scythe cared about all of our mental states, so they conveniently positioned both screws in a way so you can screw them down through the fan wings without needing to remove the fan completely. Very, very delightful. So okay, cooler installed, but how does it perform? Before you assume that I will now come up with my usual graph stack with every cooler I ever touched since I run all of this, the Shuriken 2 will not be on there. Unfortunately, the Shuriken 2 did not manage to complete my standardized benchmarks, even at full blast fan speed. To be fair, this is a 3900X and this is a 92mm fan. 
and coolers like a Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim have way bigger heat sinks and they still did not manage to complete the benchmark. So the Shuriken 2 failing the standardized benchmarks was kind of expected, so we needed to come up with a different one. We used a 10700K and pushed it to 1.2 volts with 4.7 GHz of course. All set. From here we needed something to compare it to, uh, luckily I still had the Noctua NH-L9i lying around and the Alpenphone Black Ridge just came in at the exact right moment. Using our new benchmarks, we found that the Shuriken 2 completely annihilated both of our coolers out of existence. With 53 degrees C at full blast, it left the other two coolers in the dust. Okay, the list is quite short for now, I'll admit that, but 8 degrees C difference to a Noctia cooler is really nothing that should be ignored. Once we noise normalized all of our numbers, we got this graph. Sure, the Scythe Shuriken 2 can be a bit louder than a Noctia NH-L9i, but it is also way cooler at that moment. Once the target temperature can be met by both coolers, the shuriken is basically offset by one unit of very much cooler to the left or a unit of way less annoying to the bottom. And yes, let's just ignore the Alpenfilm Black Ridge in the top right corner, which just kind of reminds me of the original AMD cooler that sits in the top right in my usual benchmark graphs. It's... Uh. To sum up the performance part, the Scythe Shuriken 2 completely destroyed both the Noctua NH-L9i and the Alpenfilm Black Ridge. To be fair here, the NH-L9i is still only 73mm high, with the actual heatsink being just shy of 22mm, while the Shuriken 2 is, yeah, it is quite a lot bigger. But as long as you can go up to 57mm inside of your case, the shuriken is the man for the job. So what was good and what was bad? Installing the cooler was a pretty easy process and the pre-assembled Intel backplate was just a nice little touch and I love Scythe for the fact that they did not make me remove the fan to mount all of those screws down. You are really the best. Quality wise, it's as good as it gets. From what I can tell, I don't see any quality differences between a Shuriken and a NH-L9i, although that at this size level you are basically just looking at a chunk of aluminum anyway, it just has a fan drilled on top of it and the rest, there is not much to be bad. Design wise, in my opinion, it's perfectly fine. Sure, I would have preferred to have a black heatsink, but other than that. But by, by far the best part about the Shuriken 2 is its performance. It knocked out the NH-L9i and it even managed to outperform a cooler which initially looked like it would kick his ass. Not even to mention the devastating noise to performance comparison between all of these coolers. So in the end, the what could have been better just boils down to a very few minor things and a possible hypothetical improvement. First off, maybe a bigger base for Intel 12th gen and while you are at it, add another heat pipe, that would be kind of nice, especially because they already have a typo on the website where it says 5, where it is actually 4, so just one thing would need to be changed here. But more realistically, a black heatsink would be nice. And please, please stop doing this. Uh, no, please stop. As a last kind of weird point I have is, is the manual. Everything is correct and well explained. I just found that the example images were super confusing. Why are all of these drawn in a sideway looking orientation? I, I don't know why, but it confused the hell out of me. And I had to completely redo the retention brackets part over and over again because I just got confused by the image. Just make any future images straight and it, I believe it would be better. Uh, but okay, so to buy or not to buy, I mean, complete recommendation from our side. If you're looking for a sub 60mm high cooler for your next SFF Ultra build, I don't believe that there will be many coolers out there that can beat this for, for a very long time. For sure I will try to find them, but I'm pretty sure that this will stay at the top position for quite some time for now. So no, I believe you will not do anything wrong with getting this cooler. And this should be it for the Scythe Shuriken 2, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Noctua L12S. It's quite a lot bigger, but it still fits into many SFF cases out there. On a side note, we now also have a Discord server, so if you want to join us, there is a link in the description below and we can start to talk. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.